All right, so I'm here with Mike at his house out in Camotes. He uh, bought this property and then built the everything from scratch. There was literally nothing on it when he started. Um, this is, I'd say, an upper mid-level house that he built. It's very, very nice, but it didn't cost him a ton of money in order to build this. Very, very comfortable, and we're going to do a quick tour of it. And Mike's going to explain us about um, the whole process and everything that it's took, the different features of his house, and let's go check it out. Hey, uh, while we're here, it's something you'll probably need to know if you're going to do this. Is you're like, well, it's kind of a standard. It's a one meter setback. So if you have a concrete road, uh, wherever you are, you're going to have a one meter setback. So when I do a fence, I'll do a fence one meter from the edge of the concrete. Uh, if you drive down the street, anywhere in this neighborhood, you'll see all different kinds of things. But that's it. And if you're a foreigner, you kind of want to play by the rules because if anybody's going to get questioned or fined, it would probably be a foreigner because they have the ability to pay that fine. So you would be the selected lucky one. <laughs> we have a winner. <laughs> uh, uh, my garage, again, uh, I don't know if I said this earlier in a different video, um, build a storage place for your tools, valuables, concrete, blades, whatever you're gonna do so you can lock it up every night. Things will walk off just like anywhere in the world if you leave it out somebody will find a reason to take your stuff. So lock your stuff up every night. Um, this I built first. This is Amakan. This is block, hollow block. Let's go around here. So you get the water off your roof, right? I, I do. Uh, uh, I have my own water system. Unfortunately, when I was uh, began to build, they were out of water meters. Now, if things don't have to make sense to me, I don't have to agree with them, but I cannot bring, for me, I can't. Maybe others can, but I can't bring my American attitude, which is, what do you mean you don't have that? It's, go and ask. No, we don't have water meters. Uh, and then they told me, if you'd like a water meter, you could go talk to the mayor. For me, I've got common sense. Me talking to the mayor is probably only going to cost me money. You know, they're not going to bequeath me with a water meter and a big hug. So I chose just, look, you're not giving water meters, you're not issuing them. I'm not friends with the mayor. I don't want to wave a big flag and say, American with money here on your island, you know, come stand in line to pilfer me. Because that can happen out here. It's not America. In America, you could sue different departments and stuff. Out here, we're a guest, and we get reminded of that. So if I want to take advantage of all the benefits of living here, I call it flying under the radar. I'm doing nothing. I'm just not bringing attention to myself. And going and talking to the mayor and either complaining or ask, asking for special services would be drawing attention to yourself. So I decided way back at the beginning, I will make my own water system. Simply catch all the water off my roof, gather it in a tank, pressurize it to the rest of the house. Very simple process. I have a friend down the street from Australia. Uh, that I met prior to building my house. I asked him about his water system. I looked at his water system. I asked him, it's now 10 years later, what would you different, do different with your water system? So I copied his and changed it how he said he would change his. So you listening to me is a great example of what I did before. So this is all knowledge that's been gathered. And once again, all the knowledge I have. And so maybe you, you, you you know, people don't need to make some of the same mistakes others made. We, you know, we can learn by that. And uh, so I have, I believe. So this is, you got the, um, the covering, like the ceiling on yeah, the this outside? Is a, that's, it's, that's covering up the, the truss system and everything. Yeah. Like we were looking at the, the house that was under construction yesterday. Yeah. And you got these really beefy... Um, Commercial size gutters. Because that's, that's uh, one is I needed the, the thickness in the in the metal and they come in four mil five mil and six mil i think that's a five or six so you can get a small rain gutter but um the smaller rain gutter it's not as strong and this this is what i wanted to ensure because that is my water system that's my supply of water to my house so uh, so, so this is kind of all going towards the back yeah and then it's you got, got a the slight tanks back there it's got a slight gradual flow that goes to the back not noticeable you can't look at the house and say your roof is this way because it's not it's the gutter is slight over a, that long span and so the water will flow to the back gradually and uh, I pick it up here in the back let's let's do that and then we'll do if we can 
So first, right here, first we see one downspout here. Uh, uh, hang on, there's a one, yeah, one downspout here, another downspout here, coming from there. Both of them come into one and just drop into this. This is a tank. It's not a metal tank. It's not a plastic tank. I built concrete tanks and I built them the size that I wanted to fit this whole space off the back of the house. And they're right up against the house, which yeah. you're saying the Australian guy, he built his farther away. And That's what he, he would have done different. Wasn't able to get like, yeah. the, the same kind of uh, angle going into it. And then well, also and he had these, these pipes running out in the air into his tank. He just didn't foresee that he was going to need more than one tank. He built one tank about the size of one of these. And then after a while, he wanted more water, so he put another tank right next to it. So you being one tank, me being another, and then he made a third tank. So now he's got three big concrete tanks out in his yard. Me, what I did is I put two large tanks. My house was built, I poured. That means I formed in and double rebar reinforced five inch walls for these tanks. You build it different than a house. The rebar must go down and bend into the floor. You don't build a wall here and a wall here. It'll split in the corner and leak. So there's a certain way you need to build it. You don't need to get scientific. But before you build something that's going to contain water that big, you're going to want to make sure you're structurally sound and you know what you're doing before you do it. And then once you do, you just build it. No problems with my tanks. My tanks also provide me privacy. This is my back balcony. That is the back door off of the bedroom. What you see here, this isn't a patio. This is the septic tank. So my sewer system is here, under. Mm -hmm. It's all locked in. I have a vent pipe over here. So anytime you're doing this, rookies, you can't just put the stuff that creates methane gas in the ground without giving it a, a way to vent. Mm -hmm. And vent is just a simple pipe that goes up and it's open to the air. That's what this one is like along right here. I don't even have to put it through the roof, not to get what I needed to do, which is just to create a vent for, for when uh, human waste decomposes, it creates methane gas. Flammable. Obviously. Yeah, That's and it could be combustible. So, you know, simple mistakes that uh, keep somebody from doing something. Oh, I don't know how to do this. What if I do something that blows up? That was what would blow up. Yeah. You know, you, you could create a problem there. I'm not saying it does. I'm just saying all you simply have to do is so that's underneath, and then you have the tanks are above ground, so tanks are, no possible way that any of that can mix together at well, all. Well, these tanks have concrete bottoms. Mm -hmm. it, before you saw this, you, it would it would look like a, a jail cell, a jail cell. It had rows of rebar, and then staggered another roll of rebar, and then plywood, plywood, and then poured concrete. But the rebar, instead of going down and just stopping and, and attaching to something this way, bent and went into the floor so it is 100 percent yeah it's around. built together and it yeah. was poured together so as you poured the bottom you pour it up and then you join your next pores in the wall coming up but you did not pour the bottom and pour a wall so what you had formed is the side walls you poured the middle here and then poured the, the sides at the same time as the bottom uh, the top you can't see it but the top is completely covered it's not open <laughs> This is a tomb. It's the darkest thing you'd ever see if you got inside of it. It has the same type of lid. People want to know what lid. It's like a pumpkin. Everybody's carved a pumpkin when you're a kid. You just do it at an angle. And so I can lift these concrete lids off of here. But I'll probably never have to do that in my lifetime. It's a, it's a septic tank. It, it handles the water and the, and the, obviously the, at some point in the ground, the water will seep down in. So. I personally don't have any of my sinks or showers going to my septic. Those all go into French drains out in the yard and they water my bananas and I think around here it's actually a little bit more of a dry season but all my bananas look great. I put bananas along the perimeter of my property. One is if I don't need them there's plenty of hungry people in the Philippines that can use my bananas. Two, I like the shade. Uh, three, I like the beauty of the green. Four, I like the privacy. And so I, I just had no reason not to put bananas and then provide a uh, watering system, which is my brackish water from washing your hands or taking a shower.
Um, that water goes into, and you can almost see mine right here. They're still exposed. My house is about 90, 95% done, but you can look and I, I can explain here. Look at this and you'll, you'll say, oh my God, that's complicated. Let me show you. Let me show you how easy this is. If you look back in there and zoom in on that, you see that drip? That's just condensation from an air conditioner. So there's no, oh, okay, that's one pipe. This pipe here. This pipe comes from the bathroom sinks here and over there. They connect. These bathroom and showers come out in this two inch line, go out to the yard. This same type of pipe I drilled in the bottom of it. Many holes. Zzz, zzz, zzz. You can't mess it up because it's not pressurized. And what you're hoping to do is the water leaks out. So I dug a trench this deep by this wide, put gravel in the bottom, put this perforated pipe on it, went out there and to the side either way. I put more gravel on top and then I took old concrete sacks, which are made of plastic. We all know plastic doesn't break down. It's gonna be there for a hell of a long time. I put that on top of the rocks and then covered it with dirt. If the dirt gets down with your rocks, it'll start doing what it does. You could make a road, it gets so tight. Mm -hmm. I want it to be porous. Mm -hmm. That's it. I only have to do it right one time, build it right. We call it a French drain where I'm from. Other people can call it whatever they want. Even like this gravel here, I would have taken the pipe, laid it right over the top of that, put another layer of gravel, covered it with something, will not allow the dirt to go down, and um, pack, pack it with the gravel. So it allows the pipe to drain water into the ground. So those are my two lines. I got one coming straight from this bathroom, another one, uh, and then I actually have another pipe that's attached. There's a hole in the side of the septic and it comes out and it comes here and that is the vent for this entire tank. There's no mechanical parts to the septic tank. It's a hole in the ground and concreted sides. So this stuff isn't complicated and it's not rocket science. And another thing is I didn't have to be an engineer to do it. I could simply ask a Filipino guy who's built 40 of these things so what do I what do I do here? You know what kind? What do you guys do? I built them in Hawaii, but you know Hawaii we have a lot more strict laws and people coming out to examine and sign off and all this stuff. It's not really that way here. There is comply with a certain way they like to have it built, but again there's a guy who's already done it for 40 years and no it doesn't cost fifteen thousand dollars to do a septic here. You know I, I, I'm not going to quote prices on a lot of uh, different services. Uh, but I built in Hawaii and I built multiple times. This, this is easy. It's easy. And it's actually fun and pleasurable for a guy like me. I, I like getting a good value for my money. Um, and I really feel like I did that. This house here cost, you know, for the basics for doing the shell and just, just the, you know, not my appliances or furnishings or anything like that, but my simple stuff, I'm in it for about 60000 now, I did the work too. I did jackhammering for this. Uh, I'm, I'm not telling you you can do it for that. I'm telling you I did it for that. But depending on how much you want to work or, or how much you want to be involved. So, but I did this for that. And I, I'm quite pleased with what I got. I, I really am. I, I, I can't imagine doing anything close to this anywhere else. And uh, the reason it's not the materials. The materials are comparable to the United States. It's the labor. And then it's also the way it's done. It's a much simpler process. It's not a costly process. So. And when you were you were here, you were actually on the job site working with everybody. Yeah. So you were able to kind of steer and get some of like the, the finishing work done that a lot of times is omitted out here. And that's kind of the difference between like when you look at a house and you're like, is that built by locals or is that built by all Western this, people? You got these different kind of things. All this that, trim. Some people like that. I obviously like it because that's what I chose on my house. You didn't need to do that. People don't need to have an archway with a trim accenting the archway. The archway might be creative enough. Mm -hmm. We've got an arch. Oh no. You know, I like to say, look at the arch. Yeah. That's my artistic if I'm gonna create something, that's what I wanted, and I'm the owner. And so not everybody has to like mine, I, I don't really care. The thing is, is I like it, and I live here, and I look at it, and I go, that looks good. Let's go around and look at the front okay. porch. You got some can, really Can nice I take a second to show you something yeah, yeah. that 
can, can we step over here? Here's something in process. So you're asking, you, you ask, uh, and it reminded me of something. So what would the owner do? It's like, well, you don't want to get involved, but you want to be involved. Mm -hmm. That's kind of a dichotomy. It's like, what are you talking about? Here's the rebar. So when you're building something here, these columns, uh, remember I said the walls to my tank? This is the rebar. Why is this rebar this orange, reddish orange? It's because it's primered. And you want to primer your metal because you don't want your metal to rust inside your concrete. And so if you can help uh, prevent that, but who would do that? You would do that. It puts you on the site, put sawhorses up, put your rebar. You can supervise. If they're running out of material, they'll tell you. You can go order it. You can go buy it. Um, but you're on site and you're doing something. Mm -hmm. You might say, well, I used to be a superintendent of a something or other. Congratulations. But here, the, the people with the experience are the guys doing it. They don't necessarily speak your language. Um, but if you can figure out how to pick the right lead guy and a couple of, of good hands or good workers, uh, they call them labor here, but most of them have experience and they know what they're doing. And so if you, if, if you don't let them get stopped by a lack of material or a lack of equipment, this and they'll pull up and they'll take a, a, a hacksaw. They're prepared to hacksaw every piece of rebar that they have to cut. I wouldn't allow that. I got a grinder with a cutting wheel. Mm -hmm. Speed up the whole process. Speed up the minute. whole process throughout a several month period. I can't tell you how much time I saved, but yeah. these guys will take that. They just get paid by the day, sometimes six, eight, ten dollars a day. So yeah, they'll, they'll be happy to extend the project out. Where if but you're why there, would you anybody? Give them a power tool. But why would anybody? Even in America, even if you're making twenty-five to fifty dollars an hour, a smoke break. Well, it's 15 minutes, you know, I got paid that, you know, I just got to kill the day. Yeah. These guys, what, what do they care if they hacks on me being on here? I didn't crack a whip, but I also gave them the tools that made them feel like professionals. I taught them how to use vibrating plate tampers. I brought a, I have my own jackhammer, a, a nice Bosch, you know, a, a commercial Without piece. Without that, they'll literally just like excavators. Flintstone. Yeah. They'll do this. And why? Because how else are they going to do it? That's it. A chisel and a hammer and hopefully a five pound and not a framing hammer right we, we get out here and we were like uh, uh what what uh i think it's good to talk to somebody i really do yeah I, I really do i think it's it's nice to have somebody do and then you can go okay i get it well you get it until you get to a thing and you go i i i I've, i never thought anybody would do you know it's like uh, it's just a different deal it's a rewarding and you can you can do things that you would never be able to do in the United States as far as building something for affordable. Uh, you'd be able to to take some guy who is having a hard time feeding his kids and give him a way to make his you know to feed his family. And if you wanted to go well, I look at I don't want to pay him more because I'll look stupid. It's like paying a fifteen dollar laborer in the United States twenty five dollars the same as you're paying maybe a journeyman. You can't do that because you'll start a war. Yeah. Okay, so how do you do that? By giving snacks during the day. So instead of giving, you know, just a Coke, you give food, you know, feed this guy very well on the job. Nobody can complain with that. That's a veteran move, by the way. Uh, you'll figure that out after about a month. It's like, these guys are going home on their motorcycles, this guy's walking home. So he's 35 years old with three or four kids and has no transportation. And the six or eight dollars a day you're paying him. But you cannot go and pay him 10 or 12 because you because you can. What you've done is you've separated and you put a target that says, I'm an idiot foreigner. Mm -hmm. Come F with me. Yeah. Why? Because you'd be dumb enough to give away free money. But what you can do is give away kindness and food. And when you have extras, you can say, take this home to your family. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, I think most of us out here see, see the opportunity to be of service. Uh, while we're getting ours done, it's not all about you. Uh, once you're here for a little bit, you know you're blessed or whatever you call it. Lucky, blessed, fortunate. But you have an opportunity to help somebody else be blessed or give a little kindness. So your project will sustain a whole area. Mm -hmm. And mine did. And it, uh, it's a rewarding feeling. And I, I love what I have. And I've made friends with the people in my area. How many guys did you have on your The most, on your one crew? day I had 11. 
and that's when I was pouring the columns. Okay. Because you had to be taking the forms off, forming, and then when you poured, you had to mix enough concrete. Now there's no mixers here. Everything is mixed on the ground with a shovel. And that's uh, unique. Yeah, now, as a foreigner, I'm like, how could this be the way to do this? This entire house was done that way. Another thing I mentioned is there was no water. I carried every water, bit of water in here. Uh, at one time when we ran out of water nearby where I was bringing it in with five gallon buckets. So we have a 55 gallon drum here. And in the morning, it was like a bucket brigade. Come over and drop five gallon buckets until it was full. So when we mixed concrete that day, we had water to mix with the concrete and they do it on the ground. But when we ran out, I had to put it in my truck and go to the stream. And then guys would go to the stream with the bucket and bring the water and fill it into the back. And then walk over back to the stream with the five gallon bucket, submerge it and carry it back. You got, well, how would you do that? Remember, you do all that stuff and you build a home like this for 60,000. If, if you want the adventure, if, if you're done living, I recommend you stay where you're at, get a TV dinner, find your favorite HBO, and pass away peacefully. But if, to me, if I want to live and I want some adventure, I have a whole new lease on life out here, and I'm creating something, and I'm helping my fellow man in a way while I'm helping me. It's just a house, but it's my house, and now these people and I built it together. I can invite them over for, for lechon, that's the pig, roasted pig. Um, you know, I, I, I'm not a missionary in the neighborhood, but I am a, a positive asset. Let's go look at the front. Uh, windows, you guys, if, if where we're going by. I did vinyl. They have all kinds out here, uh, aluminum. But I did vinyl. I like the vinyl. I, I, I'm, I'm familiar with the, what the vinyl provides. And uh, I don't, I'm not necessarily a fan of the other. So I did vinyl windows and I did the casings around the window. So you get the measurements for those and you build that into the, um, the hollow block structure yeah. as you're doing it. And then this is, this isn't wood, right? This, this is trim. This, this is concrete. Is concrete trim. It's custom made here on the site. So he was putting those into... Um, on this nice big table here, this was our, this was our crafts table. So this is where a lot of stuff was handmade. All of this trim was made sitting on this and make a form, mm -hmm. and put concrete in it. And then cut it to the right length. Yeah, and then put it here. Even the archways were made on a template. They a use plywood. like an epoxy to stick those on after the fact? Uh, he does, does it. You it work? drill and, and fold them in and then concrete and form them in. So he made them and put them on. I mean, it's just a guy, and uh, and he did the curved ones and absolutely. everything. Absolutely, unreal. And there's different radiuses. Look at the look at that arch. Uh huh. That's not the same radius as this arch. So you might a person might not appreciate it, but I appreciate it. And so when I look at my own house, it's my house. It it's it's why I that's why I'm proud of it for me. It's, it's okay if if other people like it or don't. Remember, I'm the one who helped make it and design it. I'm the one who decided to do that. Do you know that I could either do the trim on the inside or the outside just so people could see it? But I knew I would be in here having a family party. So I have family parties out here. But I wanted to see, not just put it for people to look at and say, oh, nice house. I wanted to enjoy it. I wanted to do crown molding out here. I wanted to make this an outside room here so I could enjoy it with my family and friends. So. Uh, I think it makes sense, and it did for me, and now that it's done, I'm glad. This was originally just this big, as we can see here. You can see the arches. So this was the only covered area. As I put my big room, I, I felt like this wasn't big enough. And I already had coverage with my awnings, or my spandrels were, were all very big. So I could stand here and still be covered from the rain or stand here and be covered from the rain, or even out here. So that's why I did the round, and I introduced a round into 90 degree angles. Mm -hmm. But I like doing that with something I design. I, if I do it all boxy, sometimes it gets too simplistic. And so if you put a whole round wall, and I've created a much more of a covered area out here. Yeah. And so now I have two living areas, and I've had parties here with 75 people, and it flows right out here. It's a great place to just relax out here. We ate yeah. breakfast here the last two days. And yeah. and I put, you know, nice high-speed fans outside 
uh, to keep it cool, it's actually cooler out here than it is in the house. And plus you're out here, uh, I don't know, it's got a really good feeling, country feeling for sure, yeah. but also private. A lot of Filipino folks like to build right on the side of the road. I don't. I, I want to be back away from the road. I don't want the dust. I don't want the noise. I don't want the, I, I would rather have the privacy of people not being able to right, look right in my front door as they walk by. But yeah. you'll find if you've not been to the Philippines, you'll find traveling on the Philippines, you're going to ask yourself, why do they build six feet or five feet yeah, from the road? Right there. And then the bus is coming down. It's like, oh my God. Well, I, I guess you could ask them all. I just know I don't want to. Yeah. So here I am. I. It's nice. You got more of a front yard zone. Yeah. Privacy. So this on the inside, these are, it looks like wood, but this is actually like big tiles. Tiles? That brought in. They're not, this wasn't expensive. I'm sure it's probably from China, but it's a ceramic. So you, out here you can get ceramic or porcelain. Um, you know, if, uh, there's some, somebody who knows a lot about tiles, of, of course, but there's a lot of people who don't. But the porcelain will be a little more expensive. It's denser. Uh, it's, but, you know, go ask your tile guy. So you got your kitchen area over here. You got the granite that's on the way. It's not quite done, but you got the built-in induction cooktop yeah. here. That's really nice. So, yeah, we have uh, the induction I recommend. I like it because it's quick and it doesn't produce a lot of extra heat. Uh -huh. It's just heats the pan and so out here because it's already tropical it's never cold out here so you really don't need to introduce any more heat into your house uh and so then we'll, you you stayed away from pretty much wood everywhere except for you got these beautiful mahogany cabinets in here you were saying yesterday that some people actually use this as like the wood to build their roofs which is kind of a waste because it's such beautiful wood and yeah. it definitely has more of an ecological impact but um, the, the metal lasts a lot longer, but th these cabinets, these are all handmade. Oh yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, you really feel like you're going back in time when you're dealing with somebody who, you know, their shop is in a jungle, it's kind of in a jungle and it's not just some faux jungle setting. This is where the guy works and his team works. And when I ordered these cabinets, I said, how long? And they said, well, first we got to go cut the tree down. We have to get a a permit to cut a tree and then we, they have to get the guy with the ha with a, a chainsaw to cut the tree slice the wood and then they bring it back and then they'll put it on the table and they'll s they'll slice and then they'll glue together and and uh, biscuit and glue and and make the panels it's a tremendous amount of work goes into so, just crafting all this yeah and, and then this this is matching the molding that you have on the yeah. the windows and and I got to do that you know this was my the little crown little crown molding on here and I got crown molding above it. I also hung my cabinets a foot below some from over there. You can see the crown molding. Mm -hmm. So I didn't put crown molding and then cover it. Yeah. That seemed kind of stupid. So I dropped it. But, but you have... did a tall ceiling. Like how tall is the ceiling? Ten is feet. it a 10 foot ceiling? Yeah. Keeps it nice and cool in here. And it feels big, spacious. And if I want it, I can do it. So of course I could have done a lot cheaper house if I didn't build the extra foot of concrete around this whole place. Plus it's harder to work higher. But that's what I wanted. I wanted a, a large single story. I, I could have gone two story. I can do what I want out here. You know, you can, you can build be, because you're not so much limited like you are in the United States by money. Would you have built a bigger house? Yeah, if I had more money. Well, here, I can build a bigger house. Just build the one you want. Yeah. You know, and uh, uh, to me, I, you know, most of us that have lived our life. We're probably not coming out here at 18 or 21 trying to do this. But we, we've sacrificed and we've done for others. I'm out here and, and uh, I get to do what I want. This is one of the first houses I've, never, I've ever built. I think it is the first one I've ever built or had built or designed that I wasn't knowing that I was going to sell to somebody else. So I just build it what I want. And that's why it's kind of simple. Because before, uh, I, I would have to put some features in here that somebody else wants to buy later. You know, look at this. Everything is pretty much the way it, it's got a purpose and it works for me. And, uh, I, 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 you know. I'm, it's not that I'm in love with it. I have a house in Maui that's crazy nice. You know, it's, it's more of an estate. However, that's there. And you know what? And I'll sell that for way too much money to somebody else who's going to be happy to have it. Me, I, I just like this life. I've had that life. I've had the life before that. This, this is more, this is me. Yeah. And uh, I get to be, I get to do what, what I like to do out here. And I love that it's affordable, uh, that it helps other people, 
employs a whole part of a neighborhood. You got things that are different than what you normally see in a lot of houses. You got this giant full size or extra large size refrigerator and then you built pretty much everything around this. Yeah. And it looks that way. It doesn't look like it was an afterthought. I don't have a refrigerator that's down here and there's just a dust catcher on top with some bullshit, some old plastic jars and shit on top of it. This looks nice. I'm not saying it's going to win an award in Better Homes and Gardens. I don't care. But for me, I don't need, I, what I'd like to have is extra storage for old crap, you know, or, or if, you know, I'll probably have a, I have a coffee maker in the city. I'm going to bring the coffee maker. It'll stay here until you come because you like percolated coffee. And when my buddy comes out and stays for a week, I'll pull that and he can get up and put his Folgers in there and brew coffee. But I'll have it in storage, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, you, that's another thing is you got plenty of food storage too because it's not not close to get to the grocery store yeah. from here. So let's move from the kitchen and check yeah. out the the living room and the the bedrooms and bathrooms. Okay. So uh, you can see if you get an angle, you can see the walls. They're very they're very smooth. Now they're not perfect. They have a texture. But even when you do drywall in your houses in in, in America, we usually spray some texture on it. Why? Because you don't want to see the joints coming together. Mm -hmm. It hides things. It hides imperfections. Very hard to get it to look like. But that. this isn't drywall. This is the really um, like fine this, grain cement. Yeah, this is this is block with half to three quarters of of plaster, which is concrete, over it to seal it in. And then uh, I used a uh, there's a patching compound, um, almost like you'd use it on a joint compound, uh, put on and sanded, and then primered. And so. And that's all done by hand. Yeah, yeah. I, but see, I provided a palm sander instead of a guy doing this. Yeah. I had palm sanders and lots of sandpaper. And I have 120 to go over it, 120 grit, and then go down to an 80 or 60. So guys that have done some work, they're like, well, I do this. Do that then. This is what I did. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to get too much stuff here, and I'm not Same trying advice. to overdo it. So this is the guest bedroom over here? Yeah. So there, here's a room we created, a guest bedroom. Uh, how much to it? A portable closet. Uh, you know, I think it's nice. It's, it's inviting and uh, I've had lots of foreigner friends come, come yeah. out here. I like having company. Here's a back bedroom, uh, another, I have a son. So at some point he'll have, a, as he grows up, he'll have his own room and we'll still have an extra room. But right now I made this room because we like, I like to have company. I like to, to share the place with people. They don't. You got the cross breeze in here, so that makes it so you don't really have to have AC. There's a tank right outside the window. That keeps the whole wall cool. Uh -huh. And then the, the thick concrete is amazingly insulative. Yeah. And it keeps it really nice in here. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it, it, you know, the design, I designed this, basically engineered it, but I am not, neither a designer, architect, or engineer. But I don't have to be a mechanic to change my oil either, you know, on a car. So I, I don't think you have to have these qualifications, especially out here. And if you're not sure, you just ask somebody. And I'm sure if you have your lead guy who's building and you say, hey, I want to put these two poles together. And he's like, well, why do you do that? And you go, uh, I don't know. Yeah, you don't need this one. You only need this one. You need another, another column 12 feet away. So you got strategic on these bathrooms by putting them all kind of in a row. It's this house is what three three bathrooms mm -hmm. and four bedrooms. Yeah. And you got all the the three bathrooms kind of strategically placed so they're within only a couple feet of that septic. Yeah. And you're never going to have any clogs or issues. You're not going to have to. Shorter runs. Yeah. So so if you're taking waste from a long distance, you have to have a fall. Mm -hmm. you, you 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 know you can't go level or well go level and then it'll drop. No, don't ask for problems. And so, hey, it's not a secret. Shit rolls downhill and payday's Friday. So, so I, I put my bathrooms on the back of the house. One is in my master bathroom. This is our private bathroom here. And then I have another one in the apartment. But they're all on the back of the house. The septic is on the back. I, it doesn't make sense for me to put one up at the front and then try to get that stuff all the way around. I would have probably had to elevate it. Mm -hmm. So I didn't create a problem. I just used common sense. So same construction in here, and then you just put the nice tiling in up on the walls and everything. Yeah, and I, I've still got uh, little details to go. I'm going to trim out the top of the tiles. Mm -hmm. That's not complete, but I'm also going to trim out around the, the window. Mm -hmm. So I get the, the little artsy projects that I want to do. Why? Because I'm going to be out in the province. What else am I going to do? I go to the sea and stuff, but 
I, you know, I, I've enjoyed building this. I want to finish it out right, once again, to my taste. And uh, I, I want to introduce a, a, some stone around the trims of the bathroom. And, uh, but other than that, I, I'm pretty happy with what I picked. None of these tiles are expensive. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't care what they look like. They're supposed to look nice. They're supposed to be the ones I like and the colors I like. But I certainly didn't pay more to make me feel better. I got affordable. They came out nice. Yeah. They came out nice. You can't tell that, that they, were, they were inexpensive. I can show you mistakes. Would you guys like to see a mistake? Sure. Okay, come here. Look at this. I had a problem with the doorway. I don't want to have doors come here in 90 centimeters, 80 centimeters, 70 centimeters, and 60 centimeters. There's the, there's the front door. That's a 90 centimeter door. These are 80s. These are bedroom doors, 80 centimeters. Then you'll have bathroom doors that are 70 centimeters. Well, I, I, I didn't want to put a bathroom door on a bedroom door, but I was running out of, you see? So what did I do? I simply put a piece of the trim. Now, if you look at this one, it's got full trim around it. But you guys have been here for a little bit, and you've never even noticed. There is no real trim here. I just painted it the same color because I couldn't get a full piece in here, and I didn't want to rip one down and kind of put it here and does it work. I simply painted it. But it is not a plan, it was a mistake, and it's my mistake, it's, it's you know, in design. You needed that extra stuff. inch and a half or whatever it is on each side. So I tell people this, if you get 95% of what you were looking for out here with other people that don't speak your language, and you get it done, you're doing great. You're doing wonderful, even 90%. Is this what I want? Does this bother me? It did when I was like, darn, I, I don't have enough, how do I move this? I could do this. Do I move the doorway out here? Why don't I leave a little hallway here? I had all this little design thing. I'm looking back on it, was trying. You know, I had lots of choices. This is what I chose. It works. The door oh, d door opens all the way. I've got good access to this back bedroom. The only thing I have is, I knew it. I knew it beforehand. I'm not going to get be able to get a full piece of trim around here. It's not going to look like this. However, when you're looking down the hallway, you cannot see this. Yeah. So. You can see that, you can see that, but you can't see this. So it doesn't matter, only to me. And I'm okay with it, and I'm the owner. So it's like, eff it. It's a pretty livable mistake. Yeah, yeah. And it's a design flaw, and it's mine, and I did it. I made the mistake, and, uh, you know, I probably won't on the next one. Yeah. So let's, uh, can we come in here? This is the master be bedroom. I, I really didn't need anything more. I wanted my private bath when I had folks over, wanted them to be able to use it, but I want people in my own bathroom. I'm a grown man. I'd like my own bathroom with my own medications or toothpaste, toothbrush. So that's why I didn't choose to have one big grand bathroom, a decent medium-sized bathroom, and this, I guess, medium, medium-sized bathroom. Um, this goes out to the balcony. There's no, there's no tile yet, but I'll tile it. Mm -hmm. But once again, I said I'm 90, 95% done. I just need to tile that, and then I'm done. But this accesses that. I, this is also my laundry room out here. This is where we do laundry. So I take my dirty clothes from him and I go right out here. I don't go out to a garage or anything. I make everything useful. And then the AC actually dumps the hot air right out yeah. there so that helps dry everything. But I think the last thing we never covered is you actually built like a whole guest apartment on the oh, side. Oh yeah, yeah, we'll go see that. Uh, hey, the color schemes, this is what we decided. You know, you get to do whatever you want and make it up. Uh, I, th I think there's some simple designs, but I could spend half an hour, an hour with you or you telling you, this is what I would do in the bathroom, this is why. And you go, oh, I didn't think of that. Well, you know, I did. And then uh, th there's certain things that you'd want to do. But, you know, giving you 30 seconds of why the bathroom's designed the way it is is probably not fair. But there's a lot of thought that goes into it. Uh, I just want to show something real quick. Um, here, there's a, a large exhaust fan with a stainless chimney that goes up. That'll be the final piece and the granite. So this isn't kind of a weird design. It's, we're gonna do cooking here. We have the TV there. You could cook from this side. This exhaust fan is operated from both sides. So I spend a little extra money on that. That's because it's right in the middle of the kitchen. It's almost like a, a monument or a feature. So that's where I went up. Everything else is pretty, but it blends in. It's the same colors as the kitchen, but that'll be right here, and this will be a center point right here. But you could simply cook from either side of this and watch the game or whatever you do, the big screen on the wall over there. 
So there's some thought into the design of this, but this kitchen's not done. It's looking forward to it being done. How long did the process take for you to... You're going to get really close to being done within six months if you're staying after it. I mean, or, or less. You're, you're going to get really excited at three months because you're going to see columns. The roof is going to be started. So here's the apartment. Uh, hit the lights. There we go. Uh, so this, you're going to have the kitchen that's in here that's not in here yet. Yeah. So I have a simple water supply. Half inch, I got a little plug in there, and then a drain. So uh, I'll have a sink here, right below a window where it should be. So you could do dishes, you could see my view outside the window. And uh, I had a choice to design whether to put another full window here. It's a small apartment. I want to give it character. I put a different size window. Also, this window is shorter. And so I wanted enough counter space. I didn't want to have, if you look at how low that window is, I would have had the my, my sink, you know, my water would have been splashing right out the window. Yeah. Yeah, so I wanted to be able to have a nice backsplash, and I wanted to have a nice view. So little designs that you want to think of when you're, when you're designing your place. So I could have put two full size. These are 4x4 four four windows, by the way, 48 by 48 And this one's obviously a bit smaller. I can't even remember what it is. Another thing, everything, a lot of stuff out here is all done in centimeters. So you'll, you'll need to learn to convert that early instead of being frustrated. Just learn to convert it and go buy it because a lot of other people do. And it's actually a... It's almost easier. Yeah, it's a finer, finer measurement. Uh, simple. Long here. I'm not going to turn, do 90 degree. And try. Just simple along here. Cabinets, uh, a smaller version of the kitchen. Going to do them in a different material. Uh, more of a melamine with a three-quarter marine ply. So I'm fine with that. Uh, it'll end here. I'll probably do a little low almost like a bar, but create some uh, granite counter here that doubles as a little kitchen or a desk. Mm -hmm. I'll do more of a living room over here. So this was a real be a, a real studio uh, for someone with a quality kitchen with nice induction and uh, a range hood. And so. And then back here is the final bathroom, yeah. which is basically all in a row. I've so it can go right do, into that. I've chosen to do these portable closets because they were quick and easy. I could have and still can with the cabinet maker make a custom closet here. But at some point, it's like I, I already have guests staying here. So um, to put it off until I get everything complete to do what? The unveiling? I'm sure I share it. People come out here and they love it. And they're going to the beach. They go to town. They out fiestas out here. They really enjoy what the province has and not from a hotel room and a hotel restaurant. That's a cool experience, but this is a different experience. So I have people come out here and just stay. Well, speaking of it, let's get a couple last shots of this bathroom and then let's get out and explore yeah. the island a little right, bit and right, check out some it. of the things that we can see. This bathroom, similar. You'll see it's probably got some of the same tile as the other bathroom inside. Why? It was easier. Now I only have to keep one extra sets of tile if these things ever break. Mm -hmm. But I don't have to keep eight different tiles and store them and now become a, a, a tile warehouse. And so, it has that nice, consistent look and feel yeah. where it doesn't look like it was all patchwork together with random tiles that were on sale. A lot of the, the houses that I've seen here, um, they're, you know, built in so many stages that you look at it when it's done and it looks like a patchwork because yeah. it just hasn't had that standardization where... It looks like somebody gave them tile and they took and put in whatever they did. And honestly, in a lot of cases, that's the truth. Yeah. And so, you know, mine was a little thought out. Let's see, can you get a shot of the... The, like the wall, you know, it's, it's, it, it's nice, it's comfortable, it's, it's more what we'd be used to in America. And then for the, the hot water heater, you use kind of the standard yes. sort of Paloma style thing that is yeah. pretty much everywhere here in Asia, which makes it a lot easier to not have to have a centralized storage hot water tank. And right, and the waste. Yeah. When, we, when we want hot water, it's basically on demand. Whereas in America, it's out in the garage and we wait five minutes for the hot water to come. Yeah. But we have... It seems like so much more of an efficient system. It's like there's such the movement in America for people to do eco-friendly homes and all this stuff. And it doesn't really get much more eco-friendly than this where they're literally bringing in, you know, the cement, which is mined locally. And they drop that off in the front. You're combining that with water. You have like the paint, I guess, which is probably the 
the you know strangest most toxic substance that you have in the entire thing yeah and then it's all the metal and you know really really this clean sort of way. obviously it's gonna way outlive me or maybe even my son you know I, I, this is it's a concrete and steel structure this is yeah I, I feel very in confident the, in the West the only time you see anything like this is when the military is making a bunker and they're literally trying to have a bomb drop on it yeah which speaking of which let's take a look at the uh, Dent, you said you had, oh, in sure. the last in the last uh, sure. storm you had a coconut tree that fell yeah. on your house. Yes. And it didn't really do much. Yeah, it was. Uh, yeah, right back here. One, uh, there was one either in between or. Well, there's part of it that's I think it's cut down, but it fell, and that's what it did to my roof. So that would smash a wooden house. Oh, you know, or a smaller gutter or a PVC gutter. Yeah. You go to Home Depot, you can buy the PVC. But you know what? It's attached to your house with PVC clips. This is, there's a welded frame behind that. That's and so it, it got hit. That thing hit it. It hit it and then just glanced off and fell. So, uh, you know, I was fortunate. It probably got broken by maybe some of these limbs, you know, it's direct hit. But it was a typhoon. And uh, that's, that's the extent of the damage from a typhoon. Now people go, how's your roof? My roof is fine. It took a hit from a tree, but my roof's not going anywhere. You know, we'll see what happens in an earthquake, but I've built my tanks to withstand those. Because I want to sleep good at night, and it's my water system. I now can tie into the public water system, but I see no reason. If you don't, these are a little more than 4,500 gallons a piece, or 32,000 liters of water. I don't use that much water. I want to show you something that I really like. Just real quick, because we're here and I get excited, just stand right there, is this one. I love this. We have the beach at 120 meters away. This gets used all the time for my friends who go to the beach. They come down here and wash the salt off, wash the sand off. It's right here. It's not tracked inside. It's not I'm a clean freak, but when I'm working outside, I get dirty, you know, and I get sweaty and stuff. Man, this is nice. And... It's just my simple thing. I suggest somebody else do the same thing. If you're plumbing your house, make one on the outside so you can, it's covered from the elements. So even if it was raining and you didn't want to get wet, you know, it's kind of, but yeah. this, is, this is normal style here. Uh, Filipinos will, will do laundry. We have guests here and then the guy maybe has a Filipino wife and she always does stuff by hand. Mm -hmm. She's not comfortable using our washing machine. She's just gonna wash her stuff and put it there. It's really a family style and it's, it's a, uh, oh, I, I don't know, it just, it happens across, it's a cultural thing. So I already know that I'll, I'll provide this out here and they know what it's for and they see the buckets and you'll see you got little things of, of uh, so, uh, softener and or soap. So I don't even have to say anything, it's just, so. You and I being from America, we have our, our culture. We like sporting events, TV. Um, hey, you'll notice mine. I didn't put, it's not a big secret, but, but you can't put your electrical behind your TV so you're not looking at it. Uh, it's important to me. I like football. I like boxing. You know, I, I can be there in the kitchen and I can watch my stuff. Little things that, that are important to us as guys. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's one. Um, the ceiling fan, tall. Uh, furniture, you know, you can, you can get these things here. You don't necessarily, I think it's a bad idea to try to put your stuff in a container and bring it out here. And the problem is a lot of your electrical is a 110 and stuff out here is a 220. Yeah. So I, I tell a guy, and I have, I've told him, Hello, hi, guy. the daddy's boy, daddy boy, daddy boy. I'm 59 and this is my one and a half year old son. I'm living my best life. Uh, I've got two boys that are 25, independent men living in America, one's in the United States Air Force. But I get to do this again, this is the best. You know, that was the best then, but I get to do it again, so I feel like a blessed man. So this is my son, Owen. How you doing? Zeta. Thanks for coming on the tour with us at Mike's house. Hope there was some valuable information that you guys got during this. If you liked it, like, comment, subscribe to our channel, and we look forward to seeing you in future videos. Bye.